Hi, I'm Eric Schneider, an Applications Engineer at Qualitrol, and today we're going to be talking about the Series 930 Electronic Rapid Pressure Rise Relay, and we'll also be talking about the Field Test Kit 930 that you can use to test the Rapid Pressure Rise Relay to NERC standards. Now, the 930 series consists of anywhere from one to three circuit boards in a waterproof enclosure and each circuit board connects to a transducer that would connect to the transformer itself either under oil or in gas and the output of the transducer is brought back to the circuit boards and then if you have the sophisticated three board system it will use a two out of three logic that's very useful because it prevents false trips you have to have two boards fail at the same time or trip at the same time. And then you can also monitor your slow pressure rise, your power input parameters, and other things that you might want to alarm. Now these boards do have sensitivity adjustments on them that you normally wouldn't have with a mechanical rapid pressure rise relay. And they also have the ability to have options installed such as larger seal-in relays, or interposing relays, things that you might want to use if you've got them higher pressure application. The system itself is very simple. Testing it is not so simple. Especially to NERC standards, you're going to want traceable data that you can show NERC that you have checked the system, that all of the transducers are linear, and that it's going to work. The Kit 930 is designed to do exactly that. You can test the output of the pressure transducers with a milliamp meter that's built in. You can test it at multiple pressures using the pressure gauges that are available. You can also test your trip and alarm functions by using the switches rather than having to jumper on the boards themselves. You've got the connectors to connect up to the system and you've also got some air lines in and out along with a pump that will allow you to pump this up with a minimum amount of effort. In order to set up your 930 series, the first thing you're going to want to do is mount the transducer wire leads onto the terminal blocks. The next thing to do is to hook up your power leads. And you'll see you've also got leads for alarms of 4 to 20 milliamp output and other things. There's a schematic right underneath. Now, we have to start hooking up the field test kit. One of the first things we want to do is hook up the switch controls so that we can control the boards from the system. So we have three sets of banana plugs and they are labeled and then we have three jumpers that go on pins J6 on each of the boards. Once that's done, we're ready to power up the unit. And so now the three power status LEDs are lit. You also have three push button resets. So electrically, we're pretty much set to go, except for one last thing, and that's the milliamp output. This is another banana plug. And now we can monitor the output of any of the three channels on the milliamp meter on the unit, which is currently reading 4.12 milliamps, otherwise known as uh, zero pounds of pressure since nothing's been pressurized at this point. So the next thing to do is to get everything ready to pressurize. So we've got our pump with a quick connect fitting, goes to air in, and then we have our output, which in this case I've hooked directly up to a transducer, that is air out. We have another output available that can screw right onto the flange, so you'll have your flange valve, and likewise, a hose that would hook up, and that would hook up to your air out. And so now we're ready to start testing. One of the first tests in the protocol is to make sure that this unit will trip if you detect a jumper break. And that's what these switches will do. 
and you can see that the unit has tripped fast pressurized trip LEDs are on so these functions are all operating correctly so we can now press our reset buttons and the unit's ready for the next test which is to actually start to pump up the unit so we'll pump this up to about 10 psi and then we'll turn our valve to fast and you can see that channel 1, which is what's hooked up to the pump right now, has just tripped, which is exactly what it's supposed to do because it suddenly went from 0 to 10 PSI. It's a pressure pulse. Bingo. You've got that tripped. Now the other thing you can do in this instance is to pump up and you'll notice that we're at about 10 PSI and we're at 9.4 milliamps output. Now this is what NERC is interested in. When you start to see the different readings, 0 being 4 milliamps output, 30 psi being 20 milliamps output, it's a 4 to 20 milliamp output system, you can now extrapolate that. 0 is 4, 30 is 20 milliamps, and everything in between. So as I pump this system up further, you'll see that not only is it tripping because every pump is a fast pressure action, but my milliamp output is climbing steadily as the pressure climbs from 10 to now about 20, and we're at 14 going on 15 milliamps. And you can do this quite accurately. And you can log this, and that will show a maintenance log that says that indeed you've been testing your fast pressure outputs. Turn off the valve. Now slow pressure is somewhat different. We adjust the regulator and we trip this and allow the pressure to bleed off slowly and eventually we don't have a trip because we're at decreasing pressure pump it up again on the main tank. Now move it to slow and we have a trip. So we've tested the slow trip function, the fast trip function, the power status is obviously working and the alarm trips are obviously working using the switches and that is basically how the kit 930 works provides uh, all the testing you need for the Series 930 unit in one easy to carry box. Hooks up quite easily. It's available all the time and if you need any support, have any questions, you can always send an email to info at